Okay, doctors, we're going we're gonna to go over the standing thoracic adjustments today and some modifications of those. These can, can also be performed in a, in a seated position, depending on doctor, doctor patient size uh, uh, disproportions. Uh, <clears throat> there are a number of uh, patient positions and, and patient arm placements you can utilize for this. So the one that I utilize the most is to just cross the patient's arm across their chest. All right, and then just open up the mid back by taking the other arm, putting it behind the neck, and that opens up the mid, mid uh, uh, thoracic region. So these adjustments that I'm going to go over now work best for my T4, T5, T8, T9. You can actually take them down to the thoracolumbar region, uh, you know, depending on patient's build and size and your size. Uh, is it okay to open that up? Yeah. All right. I'm going to tuck this in for you here a little bit. The, uh, another hand position that sometimes you'll see and is used is uh, the patient's uh, kind of in a prayer position right here, right? The el elbows are tucked in and the, uh, the arms uh, uh, brought up against the chest. This can actually go on either side, right? Uh, because we're going to make a midline contact so it really doesn't matter what side it goes on. Uh, either way, the goal is for you to, and I'm going to have you just turn around for a moment, just this way. The goal is for you to be able to reach around the patient, right, and contact your own wrist, right, or your hand. This isn't the best way to uh, make the uh, connection in the front. If your patient is very large, you could actually use a rolled up towel, and that could be an effective way to do this as well, all right? Just grab both ends of a rolled up towel. So let's turn back this way again. All right. The idea is to connect the patient to you with your arms. You're not going to be so much thrusting with your arms because the thorax is not that compressible and if you thrust too vigorously with your arms you will end up at the very least you'll end up knocking the wind out of your patient and at the worst you may actually injure their thorax. All right. The contact is going to be made with your upper pec. Right. Uh, you can use a rolled up towel here as well to, to make this contact. And you're going to be making it right at the region that you want to want the movement to occur. So this is going to mainly be for extension and long y-axis distraction, right? uh, which is a very common restriction at mid, lower thoracic and up, going up towards the upper thoracic is, uh, region as well. So right there, that's our tissue pull up into the area, just like that. And you're going to use your you're going to use your your body to effectively provide the force generation. So it's the movement of the legs where this is going to come from. Uh, <clears throat> is it okay to demonstrate this on you? You could use a breathing assist and some patient preload as well. If you're going to, here's what it's going to look like. You'll ask your patient to breathe in, breathe out, and as they get to the bottom of the exhalation, just ask them to bring the head back, and that'll help to extend the area that you're making contact with. So come forward a little bit. Okay. So this is what it looks like in that mid-thoracic area. All right. Here's the preload, and you can see my hands are free, and I'm exaggerating this a little bit, so you can see that I'm not actually preloading him in the front at all. all right. The thrust and the contact of the arms can be can actually be simultaneous. All right, so <clears throat> let's have you breathe in, breathe out. We'll try that again. I'll tell you when to bring your head back. Okay, bring the head forward. So breathe in, breathe out, bring the head back, and then connect and lift. All right, simultaneous use of the legs and the uh, and the arms to connect the patient to you. So let's get you back up there again for a moment. You could. If you need to, lean the patient back on you to perform this, right? So if you want to, that'll help load the patient up as well. But if you do do that, be careful not to extend your back. You want to make sure you've got a good core uh, uh, co-contraction going on so you're not extending your low back because then you'll load up your, your low back lumbar facets with excessive weight. So we're going to have our patient open up their stance a little bit. The contacts going to be the same. We're going to use our upper pack. You can also use uh, a towel to create more of a fulcrum. 
Uh, this is going to work best on a patient who's the same height as you or s similar, close. If the patient is much bigger than you, you're going to need to stand on a platform. I, I use the aerobic bench. If the patient, uh, if you need to be taller, you can stand on the bench, right? Or uh, kind of whatever you need to do to equal the heights out. Opening the patient's stance up will also uh, get the patient down a little bit, so open that up a little bit more for me. All right, so we're gonna have the patient put their hands behind their cervical spine and intertwine their fingers, all right? And the doctor's gonna come in underneath, right? And make a contact on the forearms. But what you don't wanna do, which I've seen a bunch of the student docs do, is this, right? This is kind of a modified uh, apprehension test for shoulder dislocation. So you wanna avoid bringing the shoulders into that externally rotated and uh, flexed and abducted position, have the patient bring their arms in and that'll help you to avoid that. You're still gonna use your body to create the lift, right? However, you're going to ask the patient to help you to create the extension and to isolate it a little bit higher up, exactly. Except you're not so much gonna tip your head back, I'm gonna ask you to uh, bring your sternum upwards. That's it, just like that. So I'll cue you when to do that, okay? Is it okay to demonstrate this? Yep. All right. So this case, I'm actually going to take a contact up as high as I can get. Not yet. We'll just relax. I'm going to take a contact up as high as I can get with my pec on the upper thoracic spine. I am going to bring my patient back. And again, you'll notice that I don't extend my back. I kind of just step back and keep my own, uh, my own core neutral. All right. I'm going to lift up with my legs with the the uh, fulcrum underneath the arms. So here we go. I'm gonna lean you back a little bit. Go ahead and lift that sternum up and then lift the patient. All right, and there's the adjustment. It comes from the legs. If I wanted to create flexion, step forward again a little bit. If I wanted to create flexion here, all this is, I'm really already set up for flexion. All I need to do is bring this down. All right, we already got some movement and extension up there. So I'm just gonna simulate what this would look like. Hold it down, not too hard. You don't want to put too much flexion stress into the upper back. Again, bring the patient back to get the contact up high and just lift, lift with the legs to create the, the actual force. So we can perform this, those sta same standing adjustments in, in the same manner with the patient seated. I just want to point out one thing before we actually proceed with this. In terms of the contact, whether you're using one arm or whether you're using both arms, right? You want to make sure that you're not doing this, lifting up, because then you're going to create some eye to S shear in the shoulder. And you also want to make sure that you're not pulling down, right? So when I take that elbow and I pull down, where do you feel that? You feel that in your thorax, right? You're compressing the thorax a lot when you push down. So what you're really trying to accomplish here is around the elbow, a little bit above it, and you're pulling in and up a little bit, but not up so much that you're shearing the shoulder girdle. All right. So again, the variation seated would be for me to use my pec again. I can actually lean my patient forward a little bit, tuck the head down, and then come in with my, my pec and have them come back up and that's going to give it a tissue pull in the area where I want that movement to occur. I showed this before with a breathing assist. I generally don't even use a breathing assist with this. I'm just going to kind of feel when the patient's relaxed and thrust accordingly. So again, I, I noticed as you guys were practicing that some were doing too much of this, too much compression, and your patient will feel that in their thorax. You can really start with zero compression Right, just like that, and again, simultaneously add the compression to connect the patient to you. And if you watch my knees, you'll see that the adjustment's going to come from using my legs. Right? So the only purpose of the arms is really to connect the patient to you. Uh, the less you thrust with your arms, the more comfortable it will, comfortable it will be for your patient.